says that you will know the truth and that the truth will make you free. Thank you because your word is setting us free. Is It is blessing us. It is prospering us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I want to thank you for your light that is shining through me, for your glory that is shining. And because nations and kings are coming to the brightness of this light. Amen. Welcome once again. I want to take this opportunity and this pleasure to welcome all of you who have just joined in on I Met God Worship Encounter. It is always a pleasure having you online. And so today I want us to continue with what we were studying yesterday. What are looking at the characteristics of praise. What does praise entail? Yesterday we looked at the very fact that praise puts God in the first place. Today we are going to our number two characteristic of praise. And that is praise flows from friendship with God. Praise flows from friendship with God. What do I mean here? Uh, you know, people who praise God, no matter the kind of situation that they are in, people who live who who live lives of, of of thanking God and praising Him, are people who have a deep and close relationship with God. In other words, it's it's, it, it's not that they've heard about God, but they have experienced God personally in their lives. And you know, to them, praise is not a duty. To them, praising is not something that they do. Uh, uh, it's not an option. No, to them, praise just bubbles up automatically, naturally flows from deep within them. Why? Because they have experienced God as they've experienced the joy, the strength, the peace, the comfort that God gives. And so they, when they praise God, it, 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 to them, it's, it's, they, they enjoy praising God. There is nothing they would rather do other than praising God. I mean, there is no way you can experience so much joy, so much hope, so much peace like you've never experienced before and then you don't get to cherish that moment and then you don't cher you don't get to cherish that person who has been an instrument of that joy and that strength and it doesn't mean that like if you have a relationship with God if you have a, a close relationship with God I mean it, you will always feel like praising God no you may also not feel like praising God but you know what you are gonna praise you will find yourself praising God anyways because you know that your experiences or whatever that you're experiencing or your feelings cannot change who God is in your life and so when it comes to praise uh, it, it sometimes we begin to praise God from what we've heard about him but eventually, praise must progress from what you've heard about God from other people to what you yourself have experienced about God. It's very easy to praise God when you've heard about Him and not yet experienced Him. 
when everything is going on well but when things are when things are not okay, when the going is rough, when there are storms and challenges, your praise will not survive on what you've merely heard about God. No, for it to survive in such moments, you need to have experience. You need to have had an experience of God. If you are in need, you are in lack, for you to continue praising God, even in your lack, and say, God, I know you're a provider, you must have experienced God being a provider, and not merely having heard about God being a provider. Do you get my point? We need to build a relationship with God if we are to continually praise God. And so you might be there and you're saying that, how can I develop this relationship with God? How can I, how can I have a, a deep relationship with God so that I can praise Him? Because you know what? It's, it's, you cannot brag about someone that you do not know closely. You're bragging. Yes, you might say good words. You might uh, say words that are adorable, but they will not be genuine. It will not be sincere enough because you haven't experienced it yet. You can't praise God genuinely unless if you have experienced, if you have had an experience of whatever that you are bragging about God. And so you're like, how do I then build this relationship with God? It is very simple. It's just a matter of relating with God on a daily basis. How do you relate with God on a daily basis? By reading His Word. And I know that some of us, you know, reading the Word is hard work. It's work. And if you can't read the Bible, at least get an audio Bible. Because some of us are not good at reading, but uh, we are good at hearing. At least get an audio Bible. But make sure on a daily basis you relate to God by reading His Word. And then also spend personal time in prayer. I mean, it's simple as that. Talk to him. Tell him how you feel. Tell him about your situation. Remind him of his promises to you in that particular situation. And then number three, how we relate with God on a daily basis is trusting him. Even in hard times, trusting his word to come to pass. Even when we don't know how. I mean, choosing to wait on God in a midst of of challenges and in the midst of hardship, that is how you develop a close relationship with God. And you know, and I know it's uh, it's good to go to church. It's good to listen to the sounds of, of your pastor, of your bishop, and all of that. But um, there are things that God will communicate to you when you begin to relate with Him. There are things that God will communicate to you that no other person will ever communicate to you. There are things that God, want to, God wants to reveal to you, that God wants to speak to you about, that no any other man on earth will ever reveal them to you. There is, there is much more that God wants to talk to you about beyond what other people, beyond the sounds of, 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 of our pastors. And you know what? Those things that God communicates to you personally, they become fundamental truth that of which you're going to base your praise even in times of hardship. It will be very hard for you not to, it will, it will be very hard for you not to continue praise God because you have had Him communicate to you personally. Did you know that? There is, there is something that you haven't heard that God wants to tell you. There is something that every other person, no any other person has ever experienced that God wants you to experience. There is a solution. God has a solution to, to your dilemma, to your problem that he wants to communicate to you. That probably even your pastor can learn. That probably even your closest friend can learn. That will even take you ages to find out. But you know what? God is like, I, I have no way. They are no, he, he is not letting me do this. How can I help him out? And I want to speak to you who is watching me. And I know that at times, life is so hard. Life gets so hard. And you are struggling. There is a lot of struggling. 
You are struggling to fix your marriage. You are struggling to fix your relationships. You are struggling to fix your business, to fix your children, to fix your career. You are struggling to make your dreams come to pass. You are struggling to make both ends meet. And God is saying, if I can only have them relent with me, if I can only have them praise me, if I can only have them spend at least one minute in my word, at least a few minutes in praying, and if I can only have them trust me, then I will solve whatever it is that their problem is. I want you to open with me in the book of Psalms 81. It says, Psalms 81, I'm reading from verses 13, it says, If only my people would listen to me, and Israel would follow my ways. So I'm going to be paraphrasing. Okay? If only Alice, you can put your name, if only John would listen to me, and follow my ways, and relate with me, and praise me, I would quickly subdue his enemies and turn my hand against his foes. Then verses 16 is what I love most. It says, I would feed John or Alice or Ruth with the best wheat and I would satisfy them with honey from the rock. Did you hear that? Do you have some enemies that you are struggling with? God is saying that I would, if only I can get them to that place where they can listen to me and follow my ways. What are his ways? To relate with him, to praise him. If only I can get them to that place, then I would quickly, quickly subdue their enemies. Do you know that? Things which have taken you years and years to fix, things which have taken you years and years to accomplish, and, and even up to now you haven't accomplished, God says that I would help them accomplish them in just a blink of an eye. If I could get them to the place of praising me, of thanking me, of relating with me. And he says in verse 16 that I would feed them with the best wheat and I would satisfy them with honey from the rock. In other words, I would feed them with the best life. I would give them the best life beyond what they've ever dreamed of. And I would satisfy all their needs, all their desires, beyond their reasoning, beyond what they can ever imagine. You know, it's like uh, if you are a parent and, and, you know, your kid, your little kid is trying to fix their broken toy car or their broken toy doll, and you want to help them out, but they won't let you help them. So that is how we are to God. God wants to give us the best. The Bible says in Jeremiah that God has good plans for us. I, I don't care. Probably your mama doesn't have a plan. Maybe they didn't have a plan when they're giving birth to you. Maybe your father did not have a plan. They don't have a plan for your future. They, maybe you have been disappointed by your family, by, by your close friends. God says, I do have your future in my hands. I have a good plan and destiny prepared for you. And he says, but I can't. You're not letting me get it to you because you are not praising me. You are not relating with me. So I cannot get it to you. And I want to tell somebody, what is it that you're struggling with? God is saying, I will fix it in just a blink of an eye. If you can only give me love. And I want to finish with the, with a story in the book of uh, Daniel chapter 3. The Bible says that these three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Misach, and Abednego, they were being thrown to be, they were threatened to be thrown in the blazing furnace by King Nebuchadnezzar because they had refused to bow down to the golden image. They had refused to worship the golden image that he had made. And so he threatened to throw them into the blazing furnace. And you know what these Hebrew boys said? <laughs> they said, oh King Nebuchadnezzar, we will not even explain. We don't even have time to explain to you. But all you have to know is that, be it life or death, we are ready to fall in that blazing furnace. But we will not worship any other God besides the God, the only true living God, the God of Israel. 
And they said, our God will deliver us from that blazing furnace. But even if he doesn't deliver us, we will not bow down to that image. Imagine that kind of confidence that these guys had. Even when they're being threatened to be thrown in the blazing furnace, they still professed their praise to God. And they're like, he is a deliverer. We know him to be a deliverer. He will deliver us come what may. Come rain or shine, God will surely deliver us. And how many of us, if you were threatened to, 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 to be thrown in the blazing furnace, that you would still have that confidence, that you would still profess your praise to God. You know, mere sickness. And someone begins to complain. And they're like, God, do you really care about me? Do you really love me? You, you healed the other person. You heard so and so, but you haven't healed me. A mere lack of finances. And, and someone is already stopping to even go for fellowship. Someone stops even uh, reading their word. Someone stops thanking God. You know, a mere disappointment, maybe in their business, maybe their friend disappoints them. And they're like, God, how could you let this happen to me? They, you know, they begin to complain. How? How more if they were to be threatened to be thrown in the blazing furnace? <laughs> Imagine that. If just mere lack or mere sickness or a mere disappointment gets you to that point. But this guy said, because actually later on, the king, the Bible says, the king got so furious. And he said, no, now I want you to hit that blazing furnace seven times. And the blazing furnace was made seven times hotter. <laughs> but this guy said, even if it is made a thousand times hotter, there is a fire hmm, which is hotter than this fire. There is a God who is a fire who burns more than this fire that is burning right here. They said, even if it is, it is hit a thousand times, a billion times, we are not going to bow down and worship that image. We are still continuing to testify and declare that God is a deliverer. He will deliver us. You know why it was very easy for them to brag about God, even when they are being threatened to be thrown in the blazing furnace? Do you know why? Because they had a relationship with God. They had experienced God previously in their lives. They had a relationship with God. They were reading the word of God. They were spending time in prayer. They were trusting God. And so it was very easy for them to brag about God delivering them, even in the middle, in a situation when they're being threatened to be thrown into the blazing furnace. And this is exactly what I'm talking about. That it, it, praise bubbles up from within you once you have a relationship with God, no matter the situation that you are facing. And I want to, I, I just want to speak to someone. You feel like you're tired. You're tired of pain. You're tired of struggling in life. You're tired of disappointments. You're tired of that situation. You're tired. You're weary and you're tired. And you're like, where can I get help? Who can help me? I'm speaking to you. That God is saying, come. I have the solution. I have the answers. Come and walk in my ways. Come and relate with me and praise me and read my word and, and pray and trust me. And you know what? The truth of the matter is that there is so much in God to supply all of your needs. There is so much in God to satisfy all of your desires, to give you the best life beyond what you have ever imagined. There is so much if you could only walk in the ways of God and praise Him and learn to relate with Him on a daily basis. So many times people do not praise God because they don't think it is that important to Him. They don't think it is that important. Yet it is very significant to relate with God and to praise Him. So they, they, they don't think there is that much joy, that much victory, that much strength in the presence of God. They don't think like that. 
because praising God at times it is hard work. You know, you need to go against your feelings, you need to go against your human reasoning, you need to go against what people are saying. And you know, just you, 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 you just stand on the word of God. And today I'm letting you know that if you can just walk in God is ways and praise him and relate with him, he says in Psalms 81 that I will feed you with the best, the best, listen to me, the best is what God has in plan, in store for you. And he says that with honey from the rock, I will satisfy. God wants all your desires satisfied. He wants all of your needs satisfied. He wants all of your dreams fulfilled. If you could just let him, he is waiting on you today. Do not wait any longer. Relate with God daily, reading his word, reading his word, praying to him, and trusting him, trusting his word to come to pass, no matter how hard it seems to be. And if you will do that, I can assure you, you are going to develop a close relationship with God from which you will always have the confidence and the passion to praise God, no matter what you are facing. And you cannot praise God and you remain the same and your situation remains the same. So today we've been looking at the second characteristic of praise and that is praise flows from friendship with God. See you tomorrow. God bless you.